So welcome back. Now to recap about osteoporosis, what we learned so far, it is a disease where not enough bone is maintained or too much bone is lost. It is a silent disease that happens on the inside until it leads to those fragility fractures, in which case they can be very painful, increase disability, and even increase the risk of death in patients. What controls this whole process as far as where more bone is made and where old bone is removed is called bone remodeling. It is controlled by a bunch of different signals, including hormones, which cause some bone cells to take up vitamin D and calcium from the blood to make more bone, and it causes other bone cells to eat away at the older bone. When it comes to treatment of any disease, which we have already learned about, because the body is adjusting on the inside, as the body has to go back to a new normal, it may not feel great. And in the case of osteoporosis, one of the easier things to do is to modify some of those risk factors we talked about. So decreasing the smoking and drinking to replace those vitamin deficiencies, to better control other diseases such as thyroid disease and diabetes. Also building muscle helps osteoporosis because then it sends like a natural trigger to bone cells to make more bone or to strengthen themselves on the inside. And it also improves balance so that the patients fall less and get less fragility fractures. When it comes to the medications for osteoporosis, they're basically targeting these signals that control the whole bone remodeling thing. When it comes to some of the side effects of treatment, the Things that bother the patients the most are actually things that are very, very rare. They don't happen often at all. The first is infection, and you would need over 300 people in a room on these medications for a year for even one more person to get an infection. You would need over 3,000 people in a room for over a year for one more person to get jaw necrosis, and you would need over 100,000 people in a room for a year for one more person to get an atypical bone fracture. Now compare this to you would only need five people in a room or over a year for one person to die after their hip fragility fracture. When it comes to infection, the reason this is increased in these patients is because remember, our body's immune system goes up to fight off infection and it involves a lot of little steps. And some of these medications can block some of those signals, but there is a way around this, keeping the patient safe from other sick people, washing hands, masking up if needed. And then also if an infection does occur, seeking treatment for it. The jaw necrosis happens when the bone dies because old bone doesn't have very good blood flow and it gets infected easier and it dies off easier. So when these patients get big dental procedures, sometimes this can happen. And again, there is a way around this, avoiding big dental procedures while on these medications or adjusting them or stopping it and restarting it at a later date if a dental procedure is needed. And then the third thing, the atypical bone fracture, in these patients, what happens is the medications make the ends of the bones stronger than the middle part. And so they both get strong, but the middle is not as fast as the ends. And so after year eight, what can sometimes happen is that middle can crack unnecessarily. And so studies have shown that if you take these patients and after year five, you stop the medication or you switch them to a different one, the benefit or the good effect of the medication continues for a few more years, but the side effect stops immediately. So looking at these numbers, if we want osteoporosis patients to live longer and live better, the treatment risks seem worth it. As Ginny Weasley said, anything's possible if you've got enough nerve. Until next time.